And all of these, by the way, we're looking at bacterial metabolism. So first, the metabolism of simple sugars. Simple su sugars like glucose and lactose. And then we want to look at your gram negative for the metabolism of amino acids, which are single amino acids. And now we're going to look at the metabolism of larger macromolecules. That means bigger molecules. We want to see if your bacteria have the digestive enzymes to break down big macromolecules. So to do this, we're going to grow your bacteria in two different kinds of plates. So the plates are up here and they look kind of like nutrient auger, but they have different stripes and stuff on them to tell us it's not nutrient auger. So one of the plates has kind of a green stripe and that's Anita's symbol to remind us that this green stripe stands for the starch plates. So starch is a complex, what kind of macromolecule is starch? Carbohydrate. Okay, so starch is a complex carbohydrate. So if you're watching your carbs, you try not to eat a lot of, you know, bread and pasta and potatoes and stuff, because all that is starch, which is simply a whole lot of sugars all linked together in long, complex molecules. So a complex carbohydrate has lots of those simple sugars linked together in long chains. So we have plates that have a whole bunch of starch in them. And then we also have another plate that looks kind of similar, but it has a black little X on it to remind us that this plate doesn't have starch in it. It has gelatin. So guys, gelatin is a protein. Gelatin is a complex, you know, uh, protein. All proteins for the most are complex. That means it has lots of amino acids linked together in long chains. So in this lab, we're looking at whether your bacteria can break down starch and or whether your bacteria can break down gelatin. So starch is a complex carbohydrate. Gelatin is a protein that's always, you know, remember proteins are large macromolecules. So why am I saying all this stuff? This is stuff that helps you answer discussion questions and hopefully understand the big picture here, okay? So, what you're going to be doing is inoculating your unknowns, each pair of students or each unknown, those of you who are flying solo, four of you are flying solo today, <laughs> you'll need one starch plate and one gelatin plate. Okay, so listen carefully though, you'll set them up a little differently. Um, for the starch plates, you're going to take the plate and on the bottom put a wax pencil line, divide it in half, and label it, one side for your gram positive, one side for your gram negative. And when you inoculate them, you're gonna inoculate them in a straight line like that. Don't squiggle it like that. You want a straight line so they don't grow and meet each other in the middle. So a straight line of your gram positive on one side, a straight line of your gram negative on the other side, and you, again, want to do it in a straight line. We're going to compare that to E. coli and Bacillus subtilis. Those are the controls. Anita will set those up. So the question then comes for the starch plate. And again, you're going to put straight line, gram positive, gram negative. Hmm, what temperature should we put that at? Okay. So the answer is optimal temperature. But guys, what if? What if one of your unknowns likes 37 and your other one likes room temperature? Well, that's hard because you only got one plate to work with here. So is it, is it better to go to the higher temperature or the lower temperature? Lower. lower temperature. So go to the lower one. If you really have no clue about your unknown's optimal temperature, which sometimes students don't, Put them at 30, most of our unknowns will at least tolerate 30, so it's a compromised temperature. But if you think it's 37, go for 37. Okay? So optimal temperature, if they're different, put them at the lower of the two temperature. That's safer than going too high. Okay? So then, 
Uh, controls are going to go, by the way, the, the controls go at 37 degrees for 48 hours. Yours, I don't know what temperature, I'll tell temperature question mark. Okay, so what about the gelatin? The gelatin ones, we're only going to run on your gram negatives, okay? And that's because most of the gram positives are negative for this. And we, again, we do this to save a little money, literally. Okay, so the gelatin plates you're going to inoculate differently, though, guys. Not with a straight line, not with a streak. So if you read the description up there, you're going to take your gram negative on your loop. And again, if you don't see much, it's okay. Go to the sort of bottom of your slant where there's some liquid from condensation down there. Kind of roll your uh, loop around in that sort of watery stuff and then just drag it up the surface of those the slant, you'll pick up bacteria. And what you're gonna do is literally just inoculate a little blob in the middle, just like that, a little blob in the middle. Don't do this, don't do straight lines. So to help you remember that, <laughs> Anita on these plates, bless her heart, <laughs> put a little X on them, okay? Don't put your bacteria on that X. She's just reminding you, don't like streak for isolation or for a straight line. Right in the middle, put a little blob of the bacteria. Okay, so just take your loop and kind of roll it around just in the center. So your bacteria will grow from there. If you read the description, you'll know the plate. You'll, you'll see a, a reaction taking place on the plate. Okay. So all you need, and this should go at optimal temperature. Your the controls are going to go at 37 as well. So take one of each of the plates, guys. One of each plate. Inoculate as described. Optimal.